doing things a little different today. I'm on my way to Iron House Strength and Conditioning. Uh, I know I'm a big garage gym proponent and that's been all of my videos, but sometimes you get burnt out on it. And I also realized I wasn't getting out of the house much and that was starting to make me feel a little crazy. I wasn't getting into community enough and uh, it's good to be around people. But there's also an environment um, that each GMO, a copper's just passed me. I don't know if you saw the camera, I hope not. I get the same feeling when I see a cop as if there's like a shark nearby. Although I've never seen a shark in the wild, in the ocean, I should say. Similar fear. Anyways, they're always out and lurking. And you I haven't had a gym membership in over three years because I have my own home gym and I love that. So, and I just bought a new gym membership because the gym I'm about to take you to, Iron House Strength and Conditioning, is so awesome. And it's, it's getting me out of my house because I love the environment there so much. Just getting there, even if I'm tired, gives me a better workout because it's kind of like the, the Mecca in Venice, if you've ever been to Venice Beach, where Arnold and all those guys worked out. There's just a, an aroma of greatness that they leave behind that keeps it a serious gym and that people decades after want to go experience. And that is kind of the subculture of that place. This is like the Mecca of Middle Tennessee, if you will. Um, it's in Hermitage, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, <clears throat> about a 15 minute drive from me. And it's always worth it, man. They, they've got, it's huge. They've got three different bays. They've got like an arms slash pulley machine bay. Um, the middle bay is the chest and back bay. Uh, the final one is the leg bay and they just have every machine under the sun that you could think of. Um, so it, one thing I've noticed is like, because of the environment that it is, it's, it's kind of gritty. It's an industrial building. Um, and they've just, they put a bunch of like red turf around and there's flags all over the place. It's a serious, hardcore gym. And with that brings a bunch of buff dudes, you know, so you're, you're out there. It immediately raises the bar of, Hey, you should be bigger. You know, this is what's possible. This is what you're seeing every day. You only see yourself in the mirror every day. You might be thinking, Hey, I'm doing pretty well until you get in the actual physical presence of other really big people. And you're like, Oh, that's, that's a big dude. I, I may have even seen a picture of you on social media somewhere. I didn't realize you were that big. I need to get up. You know what I mean? And then um, the other piece of it is there's just an energy in there and the ease of trying out these different new machines. And um, there's a lot to the energy of a place and, and kind of the culture that's, that's set there. And I'm pumped to have found it. And um, I only have like 30, maybe oh, 27 minutes of space left on my my memory card on this so i'll have to be efficient with my shooting i'll show you around the gym show you some of my top sets what i'm doing in there i got some real cool machines um yeah mecca music city let's go get it uh let's make it that let's do this all right just got here to iron house strength and conditioning and you wouldn't know it we're just looking at you know nothing thrilling from the outside, an industrial building. But one of the key features to this place I'm about to show you, see this right here? This gives me 24 seven access to Iron House strength and conditioning. Check this out. Bang, we in there. All right, what's also cool is you can just run up your tab. You can come into a room like this. You've got all these different subs, anything you'd need. Then anything you'd need just on a day to day. I'm coming in here and constantly getting these little impulse buys, little ghost, little shake on the way out. It's dangerous because all you got to do is then go boom, write down what you got. And then you just see it immediately charged to your account. It's like a credit card for meatheads. That's what it is. They also got some some swag you can just check out, some little pump covers, which I'm not quite understanding um, this youthful generation of meatheads where they're working so hard to get a pump and they're hiding it the whole workout with some big over the top uh, t-shirt. Um, what a waste, you know? You could have been releasing your glory to everyone's eyes throughout the whole workout and now it's just, it's really selfish of you. All right, here we are in the first bay. 
which you're going to get over here, see a bunch of uh, cardio equipment, and then you've, you know, pretty high ceilings. Um, all the pulley type stuff. A um, bunch of equipment over here. People don't like being filmed here, so I, I'm keeping them off of it, but cool flag type stuff all around. Um, coming in here now to the chest and back bay. So this is all just machines for chest and back. Making sure I keep the camera off of people, but trying to show you everything that I can. This is the leg bay. So they got some free weights, some machines, every kind of machine you can think of for the legs. A little pit shark action. Um, leg press, leg press. Another way to leg press. A lying leg press for the lazy. Another kind of casual lazy boy recliner for the lazy. And then another lying inverted angle. Oh, and then we got some free weights too, so that's always fun. Boom, boom. Uh, pretty rad deal. You got all the chains and everything. I mean, we're at a real meathead gym here. This was right under my nose for three years and I didn't know it. It kind of makes me feel like Step Brothers when they said, I can't believe I'm 40 and I didn't know about night goggles. And he goes, even better, we got them when we're 40. So that's this, just gotta find a new frame on it. All right, here we go. Little incline uh, machine press, warming up. If I, just against, back against this, you don't have enough range of motion to really stretch it. You just hit the end. So I'm throwing a little, I don't know, two, two and a half inch, three inch pad here. So it's enough for me to still get under it on the first rep, but it stretches on every rep following much better. finish it here on this number it's a really cool kind of plate loaded fly machine um, I've done it once before I kind of forget what it feels like I just remember I did a couple 25s but you can only stack 25s because it's not wide enough to throw 45s on there it's also from what I do remember it's one of those machines that kind of felt like initially you're gonna be able to do about 20 and then you just hit the wall out of nowhere and get like eight let's see if that holds true Yeah, it feels very light on the bottom and then kind of more tension picks up at the top Which I'd rather there be a lot of tension on the bottom. That's what you where you get the deepest stretch Still feels very light Five. I'll stick it there for the next set because I did 10 um, but even when I started to fail it didn't ever feel hard it still always felt light it just felt not even like a burn really set in that much a little bit but mostly it just it was like you hit the wall you just couldn't keep moving it um, just kind of blindsided by failure all right getting a little uh, delt raise in Make sure I don't hit that love this little machine here, arsenal strength. Um, uh, ooh. Mm. 
Mostly just getting a little delt pump in to, uh, I gotta t do a little commercial audition for a uh, football commercial. I wanna get a little pump in, look a little wider for it. They want a linebacker. Forgot to mention they got a flexing room in here, which I don't use too often, but I have to send in a commercial audition, which they're casting off of a still picture. They want a head to toe, they want an experienced linebacker. So that's me, put it on a three second timer. Front facing camera, boom. Should have that there. We'll see how that turned out. All right, zoom in a little bit. Cool. Now let's get a little pump reveal, huh? Let's see how we can do this. Let's throw the uh, mic on here. woke up a little thicker today and yesterday when really slamming down the calories and it's a trade-off boom but uh i'm all right being fat during summer i got a wife we good um i'm bulking right now and so i wanted to give you a couple bulking tips <laughs> If uh, you have a hard time with that after a while, like I do, one, I start to feel like kind of unhealthy, um, probably for a lot of reasons, because it is unhealthy to stuff your body full of so much food and it's saying, stop, please. And you say, no, you need to grow. Please. No, no, please. You're just, you're going to grow. You know, it's a statement with an exclamation point. And, um, Everyone thinks, oh, bulking is fine. You guys are such pansies. You're just not eating enough. And it's like, dude, no, I have to legitimately eat about 5,500 calories a day if I want to continue to see the scale go up because I have a lot of muscle mass and I am decently lean for this, the weight that I'm at right now of hovering around that 240 mark. It takes at least that to stay there. And what I'm finding is after maybe four days of a bulk, it's fun for yeah three or four days where you're like oh i'm just hammering this food and i love it and then whatever the i can't remember what the hormone is that's released when you're starving versus when you're overfilled is it ghrelin or is it um it doesn't matter i don't know what it is but it goes away you know when i'm cutting i feel like i could eat an extra large pepperoni pizza at any time and be like where's the gallon of ice cream that feeling of being hungry all the time goes away and I feel constantly, every meal kind of like, oh, dude, no, my body's screaming to stop and, and um, I have to keep going. And so what that turns into is more of a dirty bulk because I just can't, I can't hammer down sweet potatoes and white rice and, and all day. I just can't, dude. I just, I want to punch somebody in the face. And so what it turns to is that I'll eat clean enough throughout the day, you know, as, as unprocessed as I can throughout the day. And then at night is when I'll just, I, I gotta get, okay, what, 2,500 more calories, let's get it in how I can. And I go for my trigger foods. So your trigger foods might be different than mine. I call them trigger foods because they trigger something in your brain to say, I want more of that. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You, know, you can just keep eating them. You can be full as heck, but you just want another handful. For me, that's chips, you know, Doritos. Uh, Dots pretzels was the, was the victim last night, as well as uh, that snack mix with the Cheez-Its and all those different little snack pieces in there. Something about the seasonings. I'm a, I'm a savory guy. I like um, ice. I could, I could put down ice cream all day as well. Um, so what are your trigger foods? If you got a dir dirty bulk it, Save that maybe just for the nighttime so you're not eating like a, like a four-year-old all throughout the day and you can kind of feel a little bit better about it psychologically. Uh, but if you know you're not gonna, you're bulking, you're trying to gain weight and that is the goal above all else and you're, you're saying, oh, I can't get there because I have to eat clean all day and I'm falling you know, 500 calories short. Well, you gotta do something about that because you're, you're still in a deficit then and you're gonna lose weight over time doing that. So 
throw some junk in there if you have to, uh, if the outcome of gaining weight is more important to you. And that's the thing is you, a lot of people are still, a lot of people that are pretty smart even in the weight room and pretty big people are under the false impression that they're going to um, get fat by eating processed foods and they're gonna stay super lean but it's it's a numbers game. Get your get your calories in, keep your protein high enough. You're gonna grow. That's all for the physique side of things. How you look, your body fat percentage, your your muscle, you know, how much muscle you have, how much fat you have. The physique standpoint, that's all a numbers game of the calories in, calories out. Unless you have some sort of hormonal imbalance, which 99 point something percent of you don't. Um, the health side of things is you know the micronutrients the vitamins and minerals and making sure that everything's optimal on that end that's that's a different story you know if you're bulking that's probably not the number one priority for you um so get out of here with that bs okay you want to get big and swole sometimes you got to put down some junk get after it <laughs>